I'm your host, Sean McKenzie. Thank you for joining me once again on my channel on data engineering. In this episode, we go back to our Python playlist, and I want to talk about FTP and how to use the native FTP uh, library in Python, uh, not only with FTP, but with FTP TLS for a secure connection, and uh, that's going to help us to uh, move files around uh, on the internet. FTP is very old, although it is still used in many contexts and especially uh, when you're designing uh, things like app services for Azure and uh, that's what we're going to take a look at today. Especially uh, we're going to take a look at one of the limitations of the FTP uh, LIB library and, uh, and how uh, it can hang when you connect to a Microsoft FTP server uh, as opposed to some other uh, server. So without further ado, let's get to our FTP in Python. Looking to hire programmers for your project? Make sure to check out the additional links in the description. Okay, so FTP is kind of a really neat topic um, just because FTP is so old and it's also so widely used still. And uh, uh, Python is no different. Uh, Python has some native libraries and there are a bunch of custom libraries that you can that you can get that are far more sort of advanced than the basic ones. But um, I do like to challenge myself and use the use the standard libraries. Sometimes it works out and sometimes it doesn't. Um, but uh, generally speaking, uh, I like to try and do it uh, natively first and then try uh, things that have been improved after so that you can really get a sense of what was actually improved. So in this case, uh, I'm going to, you know, uh, import from uh, FTP lib uh, FTP TLS, which is the s basically the same as the FTP, uh, except it has the TLS um, sort of uh, functionality added to it, which makes a secure connection. And uh, I'm going to import all errors so that we can see if something goes wrong uh, in our procedure. And uh, uh, what I'll do first is uh, first we'll create uh, a new FTP TLS. Um, now, basically, most things that you read will have the username and stuff in the creation statement of the FTP TLS. But in my case, where I was connecting to a Microsoft server, uh, FTP server, and it's fairly well documented online that um, um, they operate slightly differently than you know uh, Unix-based ones or or uh, whatever you know you're using. Um, there's a slight difference, and so we're going to set some things before we, you know, do our username and password. And so, the first thing we'll do is we'll set our, our passive connection. Then we'll connect to the site, and then we're going to use our user ID and password, which I've created in the space above um, the import statements. Um, and uh, the first thing, or the next thing you'll do is do your FTP login, use your username and password. And then you can use that um, ftp.prot underscore p, which creates a protected um, protected connection, um, and and it protects the contents of the session. And uh, then you can change your working directory by doing ftp.cwd. And in my case, um, this you know uh, test site that I created on Azure App Services um, has. Uh, it actually has a way to uh, manage and maintain your app service site that you have through FTP. But the FTP server um, that you use um, has a little gotcha um, if you're using the native libraries in Python. And so this is uh, something that I wanted to share with you guys as part of my FTP uh, sort of ex exploration today. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is create an items list uh, which is empty, and then I'm going to use that uh, RETR retrieve lines. Uh, I'm going to use list against the FTP server, and I'm going to append all everything that comes in there into the uh, list, into the items list, and then I'll map those and split them up so that we have uh, basically a, an iterable list. Um, and uh, then from there, what I can do is I can say, you know, for item in items. Um, then I can, you know, print them or do whatever. So maybe what I'll do first is I'll just print off what we can see 
uh, in the uh, in the sort of connect connection and the list return there, uh, and we'll see what that looks like uh, in our um, in our output. And then you know after we've done you know whatever it is we're going to do in our FTP session here, we want to make sure that we quit. And then in order to make sure that that happens, we should probably add you know a try accept block here, um, so that um, if something happens, you know, and there's an error as we're working, uh, it will, um, you know, exit gracefully and still quit our session, or at least it'll try to. So I'll go to the top here and I'll, you know, I'll give a little feedback to us as we're sort of running this. I'll, I'll print starting and then I'll add, um, I'll, I'll add one for, you know, getting the list and, uh, and that will do it for there. Uh, we can go ahead and do our try accept block here. And I'll, I guess what I'll do is I'll just start the try accept. I'll let sort of the usual errors happen. Um, if I'm logging in, that's fine. But after we have a connection and we want to make sure that it exits great, it exits gracefully, um, uh, I'll just uh, put that into a try accept block here. And so I'll, I'll indent that uh, block there and uh, I'll, I'll do an accept here. And we're going to do um, accept. Uh, we're going to do all errors, which we imported above there, um, as ex, and uh, that's going to give us an error uh, if we actually run into an error. Um, and it will print that off, and then we'll exit gracefully by using finally here, and uh, we'll make sure that the FTP quits. And if we get an error at that point, then well, we can let that error show on screen. That usually means that it's not running, like there is no session, so it's fine. Uh, but we want to make sure that we close that session if uh, if we you know end up with an open one and receive an error. And so there we go. We've got our um, our try accept block. We'll hit F5, and uh, there we go. Okay, so we got our list, and this is all of the ASPX uh, files and things that are in sort of like the template. Uh, default template, uh, you know, app service application. You can see there's some directories in here. Um, so the return values are pretty useful in that uh, uh, retrieve line statement that we did. You know, we've got a date there and a time, and uh, and we've got the names of the files and things like that. And uh, so we can we can really use that by um, by referencing the items in each of the lists now. So so that's really handy. Um, and that's what we want to use, uh, you know, if we want to compare dates or things like that and, and, and do those kinds of things. So the next thing we could do is, well, we want to upload a file. And uh, normally, uh, if you're using, you know, a non-Microsoft server, from, from what I understand from all of the stuff I've read online, <laughs> um, the, the general... Uh, commands that you'll use will be something like, you know, if you're in the same directory, you'll go file open and then the name of the file using RB and uh, and then we'll we'll do an ftp.store binary. And uh, by doing store binary, we'll put that FTP command in there, STOR, and uh, with the with the name of the file and and uh, and then we'll you know, put the file there in order to be uh, transferred. And that's usually the end of story. We put a file close on there um, in order to close the file after it's done. And that works in, in most cases. And, uh, and so uh, we can go ahead and we can hit F5 and you'll see that this starts and then it's, it doesn't really give an error, which is really annoying and it doesn't stop. It just sort of hangs there. And I'm going to give you the solution for that now. So what you got to do, now some advice that you'll see online will tell you to hack this store binary um, uh, a function in uh, Python. Go into your Python and hack that and, and change some lines. But a guy also noted on the thing that I was reading, he said, well, why don't you just use that uh, yourself and so that you don't change it you know, in your source code, you know, why don't you make your own store binary 
And so that's what I did. Um, so I just copied and pasted the store binary procedure from uh, Python, uh, the FTP lib, but I removed the last three um, lines and they're not here now, uh, but they basically, what they did was they uh, unwrapped if, you know, if there was an SSL socket um, on there and, uh, and that's where it sort of hangs in the Microsoft world. Um, this is a bit of a kludge or hack or whatever you want to call it, uh, but it works great. And so um, I just removed the unwrap statement from the end, and now we can just change our line there and we can reference our own store binary function, put our FTP uh, object in there, and then we can uh, run it. And you can see, boom, there we go. Our file has been uploaded to the server. And it is in the list since we inserted it before the list or we uploaded it before the list. And so you can see that's our new list of objects uh, in our FTP site. And that's really what we wanted to see there. So that's great. Um, we've done our upload and it saved it on the server just fine. And uh, as I mentioned, you know, if you guys notice any errors with this, uh, please go ahead and uh, put those in the comment section below if you notice any unexpected consequences of not uh, doing the unwrapping of the SSL socket um, there. So uh, so that was uploading a file. Now let's take a look at uh, downloading a file. And we can uh, use a different way of opening the file um, as opposed to explicitly opening it and closing it. We can also use with. So we can use uh, with open uh, my file dot png that's what we're going to call it in our local drive after it uh, gets downloaded um, and then we'll use the wb argument on the end there uh, as f so f is our file we can say uh, ftp dot uh, retrieve binary um, and then we'll put the uh, ftp command in there uh, retr and uh, the name of the file which is uh, a0001.png that you can see on the left. It's highlighted in the left pane. And then we'll put f.write um, as our second argument there. And that will auto automatically close that uh, when you use the, uh, the width uh, block there. So, so that will download it. Uh, we can, um, there won't be any change to the list. Uh, we'll, I'll leave the list there anyway. So it's going to print the list. It'll download it. Um, and then um, we can uh, go and take a look and see in my local file here. So I'm going to uh, grab that and uh, open that file, that uh, myfile.png. There it is. Uh, and uh, myfile.png was created. It's just a blank uh, PNG that I had sitting in there. And that's uh, basically how that can work. And that's how you can use the uh, store binary uh, function from the FTP lib module to get your Microsoft FTP working. Want to help to continue to support my work? Make sure to check out my Patreon. The link is in the description.